but I want to start with President Biden because you've got a great piece out basically saying he's done. Yeah. You read the special counsel news, the left is continuing to freak out. And now they seem to be like the justifications for what they said in that report, right? El well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory and the frailties um, has been actually entertaining to me. I give you as example number one, Joe Scarborough and his spin in response to the news in that report that Biden couldn't remember either when he was vice president or when his son Bo died within several years. Watch this. I said this yesterday and maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just older people. We've, we've, lived a busy and active life, but nobody's closer to me. Nobody's been closer to me in my life than my mom. If somebody asked me in the middle of a deposition, what year did your mom die? I go, I don't know, 2017, 2018, 2019. I don't know. I can tell you everything about it. I can tell you my final word, but, but, but again, that, and same thing with Mika and her dad. So the fact, first of all, that he was asking that question. Secondly, uh, that somehow that's the most damning thing. And the Trump people are now saying the White House is like an old folks home. They don't know when their parents died? He, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for one second. No, I can tell you the day and date. Same. I can tell you the time. Yes, yeah, same. Everyone can. Yeah. So says the man who is, you know, having private dinners at the White House with Joe and Jill. Joe and Mika go. Joe, Joe Scarborough takes calls regularly from Joe Biden. He's apparently the number one fan of Morning Joe. This is the kind of thing that they don't regularly disclose. First of all, it should not be happening. Right. You cannot call yourself a journalist if you want that kind of access to power or proximity to power or you want them to like you. That's not your job. Mm -hmm. And to watch these apologists, I mean, I, I couldn't, I was rapidly flipping the night of that presser between like MSNBC, CNN, and Fox. And to watch, you know, Rachel Maddow and her panel try to explain away what we all just witnessed, which was what I would call an extinction level event. Mm. They sound not like serious journalists or serious news analysts, but they sound like cultists. And you would think that they might have a a moment of reckoning, you know, where even people on the left are when Hillary Clinton says publicly, this is an issue. This is a legitimate problem. You know, the calls are beginning to come from inside the house. And I did like your statement the other day because I had a similar thought that could this possibly be a coup from the inside? Because mm -hmm. unless he was so determined to go out there against the advice of everyone closest to him, Jill included, why would they expose him that way? Why would Merrick Garland allow it in the report? Exactly. And why would the press suddenly feel like they were let off the leash to ask the question? They have been so politely, and I think it's a kind of journalistic malpractice to sidestep what we've all been seeing. He said he spoke to two dead heads of state the same week. Three. He had a third. Three. Yeah, now it's three. I mean, there's a running tally. There's going to be more. Right. Yeah, no, I, I do have serious wonders about that. Like, is it? From the inside, they feel like they have a responsibility to let us just see what mm -hmm. they're seeing. This is the quiet, like, remember the piece during Trump? We're working from the inside to control him. Right. Remember that person? The, it was anonymous for a while, then it turned out to be like a nobody. Right. But is this that? Like, we let you see what we see. Now it's up to the American voters. You know, Politico just ran a piece this morning saying, it's too late. It's going to be Biden. Here are all the reasons why. But when LBJ addressed the nation to say that he was not going to seek re-election, it was March 31st, 1968. We're only in like early to mid-February. There is still time. It's not too late. Mm -mm. And even if he wins all of the delegates in you know March and Super right. Tuesday, he can still pass the baton. I mean, if the Obamas, the Clintons, the party elders, the Pelosi's went to him and said, it, it cannot be you. I mean, there's, he would be forced. He would be forced if they all, or we're gonna come out publicly and say, you're not competent to handle the job. He would be forced to pass the baton. And then the delegates are gonna have to do what they do at the convention. Mm -hmm. We'll just see whether these others are up to it, right? Like whether they're willing to do that to him and their party.
Yeah, we'll see the kind of character in Backbone. I mean, like, as I wrote in my column, I don't think it's just unpatriotic to be propping up Joe Biden. You know, our enemies are watching this. There is a reason the world is on fire right now. They're emboldened. They've been emboldened since the disaster that was the Afghanistan withdrawal, which Biden loves to take credit for, you know? And we are no longer feared. And I think the reason Trump against Biden stands such a good shot is people at least felt that the world feared Trump. Yeah, yeah. And they have no fear of this president. We have fear of this president. We're afraid he's going to fall or say the wrong thing. That was another theory I heard, which was, what if instead of, you know, them being behind letting us see, uh, you know, they actually did try to stop him as they've tried to stop him from giving any and all interviews, including the Super Bowl halftime interview. Yes. And what if the fear is not that he's going to lose reelection, but the fear is he's going to start a war. He's going to say something so calamitous that it can't be undone with one of those White House press statements that they keep putting out to try to do cleanup for him after the fact. You know, you heard him say about Israel, like they've gone too far the other night. Well, that was new messaging. Mm-hmm. What? Since when do you feel that way? Mm-hmm. You look down at the word ceasefire. He, he's he gotten his hands major U.S. foreign policy that can be changed with a word here or there. We've seen him stumble. Regime change in Russia. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. We heard. So, you know, all of that's only getting worse. And I do wonder whether there's a genuine fear like the one you just expressed on the inside in terms of letting him out there and free. I think, you know, it reminds me of towards the end of Trump's presidency when there were um, his his top advisors said, uh, you know, we had to make a backdoor call to China and say, if you hear Trump say we're going to nuke you, just please know we're not going to nuke you. Millie did that. Yeah. And it's it's a similar like we're dealing with both of these candidates who are so highly compromised. I mean, Trump has been having his own cognitive issues. He's been talking about World War II possibly mm-hmm. erupting. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been misnaming people. Um, but I don't like the argument that, well, at least under Biden, America is safer. At least under Biden, you know, there are sane people underneath him. This is not a banana republic, you yeah. know? And we're telling the world this is the best we can do. We're going to prop up somebody who cannot sit for a softball Super Bowl interview two years in a row? Yeah, reportedly they were going to give him Gail King. Oh, She's not going to ask any hard (laughs) questions. That would have been prearranged and he would have sailed right through it. Mm -hmm. And yet he couldn't do even that. Um, So now what they're doing at the White House is they're putting him out in these pre-taped canned videos where they just released one last week of he's sitting with a black family and they're, he's talking about how your dad really loves you. You know how much he loves you. And these kids are like, yeah, we know. He's talking to him about sports. And I guess this is supposed to make us feel better. When I saw the video, I don't know. Do we have that cut, you guys? He he looks like a grandpa. Well, I mean, you got chicken fingers. You got, you got all this. <laughs> I want the root of making sure I had the hammer. So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? You look, are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now, I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. How right, about the school? How are y'all doing in school? Why don't you tell the president about the school? Favorite thing about it is the business academy I'm in. We get to like travel, so we've been to like NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we. You're kidding me. Yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business. And it's just, it's cool. It's a great experience. I'm impressed. Is that a new program at the school? Yes, sir, it is. It just started just a couple of years ago. You know how much this guy loves you. Yeah. You just feel it, can't you? Yes, yeah. sir. Your dad jumped in front of a bull for you. He looks like a kind of a sweet grandpa talking to kids the way a grandpa would. You know how much your dad loves you, don't right. you? Right. And it, that's not going to do it. Right. And meantime, Maureen, meantime, you've got the White House refusing, as his annual physical comes up, to get him a cognitive, a neurological exam. Molly Jung Fast Fast was on MSNBC trying to rip down the Robert Herr special counsel, H-U-R, 
uh, report the other day. Just listen to what she said. I don't think that her is a good faith actor. And I think that no. 345 pages of that show that. I mean, he's not a neurologist, right? If you want to weigh in <laughs> on legal things, that's fine. But, you know, the idea and again, to fault someone for saying they don't remember during a deposition when we've seen people like Dr. Anthony Fauci say that hundreds of times during a deposition, that's what you're supposed to say if you don't remember because you don't want to be wrong. Okay, a lot in there. Right? He's not a neurologist, her, so he's not allowed to talk about how this witness would play at trial. I guess as a lawyer, you're no longer make, allowed to make those assessments. And then the, he was just saying, I don't remember the way any deposition witness does. That's all, that's all that was, Maureen. It's so intellectually dishonest. And I mean, you're a lawyer, you know this. There's a difference between someone who's being deposed, who is using facts and language in such a way to avoid answering a damning question versus a sitting president who has to ask when he began serving as vice president, when he stopped serving as vice president. A president who, I am sorry, has used his personal tragedies as part of the fabric of his political narrative for years and years to say to take umbrage with being asked if he remembers when his son Bo died, which if I recall reading correctly, I believe Biden opened the door to that. I was going to say, do we, I don't remember exactly how it went down, but do we know that it was put to him out of the blue by Robert Hur? To me, it sounds like something he may have brought mm -hmm. up and then struggled to put facts around. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. That's what I think. And to watch the Molly Jong fast of the world who sort of b built a sort of second act off of being an, a rabid anti-Trumper. You know, it's just it, the tribalism in this country, the it's not that bad if it's my side, but if it's your side, it's the end of the world, is extremely unhelpful. And when you see even the New York Times begin to turn a little bit, now they're still having a schizophrenic reaction. Mm -hmm. Like they're running half of their op-eds are like, <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. And uh, the other half are like, it's time to go. Like yeah. this, we've seen incontrovertible evidence. We all have someone we know who is struggling with cognitive decline. And if you do, as I do, you you see the signs, you see what is in front of you. And to be told that you are not bright enough to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. That doesn't work with the electorate. It's truly one of those don't believe your lion eyes mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. Like we know 86% of the American populace believes he's too old to be president, which happens to be the same number he will be if he mm -hmm. completes a second term and makes it. Um, 86%, that's, you can't wave that away by saying Robert Hur's not a neurologist or gee, I forgot when my mom and dad died like Joe Scarborough, but we do if it's true. What they're saying now is behind the scenes, you know, David Brooks, he said that in the New York Times today. I, he's like, I'm really worried about the country because now they've been misled by this mean special counsel. And this is just boosts Trump, who's, you know, clearly unhinged. And he says, you know, I've talked to him behind the scenes all the time. He's very sharp, very, that's what's Joe Scarborough. So then let's see that because we, we have not seen that. Let's discuss a crucial aspect of your financial health, your credit report. Hear me out. It's time to face a hard truth. Your credit report could be suffering due to unfounded reputation damaging claims. These are the kind of claims that simply will not hold up under rigorous scrutiny. And that's where Lexington Law Firm comes into play. For less than a hundred bucks, Lexington Law champions your cause using a comprehensive arsenal of consumer protection laws to fight for your best credit report. Lexington Law is fully equipped to challenge those exploitative creditors and aggressive debt collectors who obstruct your financial path. Go and visit lexingtonlaw.com for a complimentary credit assessment. Let their experts place your credit under the microscope, ensuring that it reflects your true financial story. Remember to mention that Megan referred you at lexingtonlaw.com. Empower yourself with the right team on your side. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.